All right. So here we go. Let's toss, draw some band diagrams in equilibrium for bipolar junction transistor. Of course, we start out with the Poisson equation, or Gauss's law, if you will. And uh, we've described already a, a way of how to draw band diagrams for PN diodes, right? You start out from always draw a Fermi level as flat as you can through the device. And if you have multiple materials attached to each other, like here, you start drawing the individual band edges and calculate the, um, the difference from the Fermi level, say, to the conduction band here. You do the same for a base. You calculate here how far the Fermi level is from the valence band, and you do the same thing here. And you draw in the vacuum levels for each material and you seek out a common energy level. Again, this vacuum level all across this device, that's common, so you draw a connection here, and you transfer those connections down and connect the conduction bands and valence bands. If they don't connect, you might have a heterostructure like we had in the Schottky contact. Here we're considering just a homo junction uh, transistor. In a, a later section, we will be talking about a heterojunction uh, transistor, where this will not look as, as neat. But here, there's nothing new. You've seen this before. This is just two PN diodes backed, uh, uh, NP, NP diode back together. So, let's define a couple more of these uh, terms. Uh, the issue really at hand is we have three uh, layers, so to speak, that we need to deal with, each of which have doping, each of which have a diffusion coefficient and a majority carrier. We'll consider an NPN uh, transistor, as I mentioned. So on the emitter side, we have a doping, and this is uh, a donor doping to make it n-type. There's a diffusion coefficient um, for the minority carriers on the emitter. And the minority carriers in the emitter are, of course, the holes. That's why it's a diffusion coefficient of the holes. And we have a majority carrier, which we will also index with an index E. Okay? Of course, on the other end side, we also have diffusion coefficients and uh, donor dopings and an electron concentration in equilibrium. But obviously, they can be different. The doping can be different, there can be other treatments for the diffusion coefficient, different traps, different recombination. So therefore, these coefficients are different, we need to give them a name, and basically we index them with a subscript C versus the subscript E. Otherwise, of course, the content of these uh, variables, the meaning is the same, we just need to index them. And the base is all the same, effectively, for the, but for acceptor doping, we have an electron diffusion uh, coefficient now, because in the base, the electrons are the minority carriers. And we have an equilibrium um, uh, majority carriers, which in the P ba base are, of course, P. And again, the indices are all just going with B. So now, we can pretty much use all of the expressions we had for the PN junctions in the same shape or form. Okay. All right, so let's do some of this. So we have... Uh, two junctions like this, and we have calculated in the past uh, that we have a depletion region here, and the depletion region has certain extent in the um, emitter side, and we have uh, associated that with a built-in potential, we have associated that with a, a doping. Uh, in equilibrium, we have the uh, other parts on the, uh, the P side, the length of this depletion region. Of course, we have charge balance between those two doping uh, regions, where, the, where we have uh, depleted uh, the free carrier. So we go back to the depletion region approximation. You've seen these expressions now multiple times. There's nothing new here. We're just transferring those from the PN junction. And of course, you do can do the same for the uh, collector and base side as well. So same expressions. I mean, they, they look isomorphic to each other. It's just you plug in the appropriate uh, doping levels on the respective junction side. Okay? 
So really, we're just transferring all of the knowledge gain on PN junctions into this transistor now and start modeling the device from there. Okay? So really, same thing as before. So this should be all very familiar. And now we can begin to calculate some currents in the device similar to the PN junctions. And we'll do that in the next segment. Thank you.